if you've explored the Visual Lisp editor a little bit, you may want to actually start developing some code, building your programs in this environment, as opposed to using an outboard text editor like Notepad or, or some other sort of programmer's editor. What we do is simply come into the Visual Lisp editor and then go to the File tab and create a new file, and this allows us to start programming code in to build a Lisp application. For the purposes of illustration, I've compiled a few statements here, which purposely have some errors built into them. And this is going to allow us to look a little bit at how do you evaluate code and use some of the code editing tools that are present here in the Visual Lisp Editor. The first statement here, we can see that I have misspelled set var. Therefore, it is not being seen as a valid function. It has not been rectified or highlighted in blue, as we would see where it's correctly spelled down here. So let's fix that error by simply deleting the extra A, and there we go, it's now been validated. Now we go to the command echo, which is a valid parameter, but that expects a numeric input, not a text input like A. So let's see what happens if we put in something valid. See the difference there? Basically, when something is not verified, it's going to show up as a black, unhighlighted type entity. Now, if you don't understand why that's not valid, let's do this. Let's simply select that code, like so, and let's submit this selection to the solver down here, and let's see what it says. AutoCAD variable setting rejected. So that means that whatever we're trying to give here into this variable is not being interpreted correctly. We may want to go back to the help file and find out what some valid uh, inputs for the command echo variable are. Well, let's go ahead and fix it and give it something numeric. And now the highlighting shows up correct, and I could even swipe over that and resubmit it to the solver just to see what happens. And we get a valid output of one. Now in this next one, I've introduced another error. We can see that set var is correct because it's highlighted in blue. But since our parentheses have not been correctly highlighted, that means that there's some sort of parenthetic lack of balance. Now we can look at this statement and see that left parenthesis matches right one, but we're missing a quote mark right here. And quote marks have to match just like parentheses do. So while the Visual Lisp editor didn't get you exactly to the error, it gave you a hint as to what was wrong, and now we can go in and fix that. And when we do that, we see that the parentheses matching is corrected. Now another interesting thing that you noticed is when I corrected that imbalance quote, this changed down here. So let's go ahead and get rid of the quote mark again. And what we can see is that whenever we have an error introduced into here, that's going to have some sort of downstream effect on code that comes after it. So again, we'll fix this. Now we come down to our third line. Oh, I've misspelled set var again. Uh, we still, oh, you know what I did? I hit a square bracket instead of a parenthesis. So let's fix that. So while this is a simple example, it does give you a, a pretty good illustration of how helpful this Visual Lisp environment can be, particularly if you're not really used to Visual Lisp or Auto Lisp syntax yet. You may want to try this out. So after you've got your code debugged here, you simply go to Save As and save that. I have a file folder for my programs, and I'll simply call that Testing. Now your file's been saved, you're ready to try and load it up and run it using AppLoad or your startup suite or some other sort of tool. There you go, Visual Lisp Editor. Good luck.